So here's my 9 volt DC 60 milliamp switching and radiant energy generator and cap dump circuit. And I've cleaned it up a little bit and added much better wires and shortened them out so less impedance, thick wires right to the coil to the cap dump all the way into the battery. And we are using from the plug here at 60 milliamps, 9 volt DC. And it's going into the battery and it's pulsing a couple times a second, hundreds of volts in there. And what happens is um, I'm able to run loads and maintain the VI curve. And sometimes even depending on the load, the VI curve keeps going up with only an input here of 60 milliamps on 9 volts running this thing. And as long as it keeps pulsing continuously, the battery with hundreds of volts. Um, as you saw in some of my previous videos, I was able to hold, you know, a load of 15 to 20 watts without the VI curve going down. But now that I've enhanced the circuit a little bit, cleaned up the wires, I'm able, I've replaced the 15 watt LED with a real 100 watt. And if you can see it here, it says 100 watt light bulb here. So this is a serious load through the inverter connected to the battery. And I will turn that on and you will see. There is the 100 watt light that turns on through the inverter here. And we have our circuit here generating the back EMF, hundreds of volts pulsing in the capacitor and dumping it into the battery here. And this is just a coil. There's the cap dump and the neon. So I'm going to show you something interesting here. Here's the voltage. So we're using um, 100 watts right now. And look how the VI curve keeps, keeps fighting it. We gotta remember this is with a hundred watts now. And we're still pulsing it with hundreds of volts. See what I mean by it keeps fighting it? I think we're flattening out now. This has been running for almost five minutes now. We're pulling some serious wattage out of this, 100 watts.
my point is you know obviously at 100 watts it's really pulling it and you can see there's a slight drain on it but it's just to show you how it's relatively flat with a lot of this is 100 watts I'm not doing 20 anymore here this is a real 100 watts and look how stable it is you know this is like how Bedini would really see what it's doing now 12.42 for a moment and the VI curve acts really weird when the battery keeps being pulsed and this is what I was talking about by like the recharge effect and it happens with um, with a hundred watt load even and you understand when my little um, 9 volts 60 milliamps here doing all of this could can possibly maintain 100 watts the VI curve and actually you know the battery starts charging itself after a while it reacts to this and as long as the battery pulses um, we're able to maintain this load for very very long much longer than because when Bedini did this in his videos when he was loading 100 watt light bulbs I could really see how quickly those batteries were discharging we were seeing it you know 12.42 12.41 12.40 12.4 12.39 you know you would actually see it like clong 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 and then you'd get it down okay 12.2 we're done within moments you know so this is maintaining as we are talking it, it went down a little bit and then it stabilized and started going up. Not a typical VI curve at all. Not what I would expect anyways. Because I've discharged light bulbs before as is. And see what it's doing there? Now we're at 12.43. The battery's actually charging the back up. We're rebounding. We went down to 12.40, I believe, and as we started talking, it went back up to 12.43. And we're still running this massive 100 watts. I realize this video is a little long, but it's just to show you what happens here, because it takes a moment for the effect to become apparent, and I wanted to show you how it takes initial load, and then it stabilizes, it flattens out, and then it starts going up. And this is a big load, folks, you know, 100 watts at 60 hertz. And my input here is 9 volts DC. And my, I measured my circuit at the input side, and I'm only taking 60 milliamps to do all of this. But the battery's constantly being hit as we speak a couple times a second with 100 volts capacitive discharges at, at amperage per second equivalents. So this is how the battery inside reacts to it. So I just want to show you folks and you know as we talk here I know I'm repeating myself but this is pretty interesting stuff here. And as you see well, our VI curve is maintaining. It's not dropping you know and this is a hundred watts it's not like we've got an LED on here oh yeah you're gonna run for a week on that this is 100 watts being sucked out of this battery right now and the VI curve is going up please tell me you know I'm learning here but I'm definitely not stupid see look what we've got now 12.44 it's fighting it 12.44 charge keeps going up as long as this keeps doing its pulsing it seems like we're able to convert the radiant into a form of you know how Bedini was saying you can't run stuff live off the radiant energy but when you're dumping it in the battery and then running a load through the inverter it seems like this somehow transduces or converts the radiant and you can sustain some pretty intense 100 watt loads and the battery keeps charging itself up the VI curve goes up not down and you know there's nothing weird about this it's just my inverter my meter and the dump from the capacitor here going into the battery I could actually hear it going click clack click clack click clack click clack click clack 
as the capacitor keeps dumping those hundreds of volts into this battery here. And as we speak, this is what goes on. So I don't know if this is the definition of free energy or what, but I would say it's pretty darn close because, you know, uh, the cost of operation here, if you're putting 9 volts into it at 60 milliamps and you're able to maintain, the, we're not draining the battery here, you see 12.45 now. So we're not, the VI curve I understand is able to, but it all drops, it's a slow, you know, it's supposed to drop. I mean even when Bedini, in the way he did it, there was a drop. He, for some reason, didn't want to show much of this looping it back kind of thing in his videos. I don't know why he was so reluctant of that, but that's my goal anyways. See, 12.45. This is, to me, this is it, you know. The VI curve is going the other way, the complete opposite of what you expect. I'm loading it down. 100 watts, folks. At 60 hertz, the battery's charging itself up with nothing but this here running in the background. Again, I keep, I must stress, 9 volts, 60 milliamps. 9 volts, 60 milliamps. I'm, the capacitor converts the radiant into a amps a second discharge at 100 volts into the battery. The battery's doing something chemically to this, as you can see. I could actually hear it bubbling inside. I don't know how good that is or not, but, you know, I hear it actual bubbling. 12.46 now, see that? Like, where is this energy coming from right now? Where is this 100 watt load? There's a chemical reaction going, that battery is acting like a kind of negative resistor as long as it keeps being pulsed just right with this radiant here to the capacitive dump the VI curve goes the other way that's my explanation and it's something chemical the ions swoosh around in there and that's where the energy comes from through the battery not from the input the input just triggers the reaction inside the battery and we don't need very much to trigger it and we're getting you know this is I'm thinking of doing more models, better prod, you know, just for myself, but then, you know, when I'm realizing I'm getting 100 watts now, for myself, in case of an emergency, should something happen, at this point, I think 100 watts is more than enough to get me into any, get me out of any kind of trouble we'd be in, you know? It might be dangerous, I don't know, I don't understand this stuff, like the, the, the commercial aspect of it, if I start generating kilovolts and kilowatts, you know? I'm just an everyday individual. I don't want to get myself in trouble by posting a YouTube video on how you can make, you know, 10 kilowatts, 10, 10,000 kilowatts, I mean, you know, with a new concept similar to this. You know, 12.47 now. See what it's doing? So, I, I would like to upscale it, and, but I'm at a point where I'm not too sure if I really want to and talk about it, seeing where I'm at with this. This is pretty intense, you know, I can do... I, I say I should be happy with this at this point. I don't know about you all, but... See, 14 minutes and the VI curve went up. And we're loading it down, folks. I mean, 100 watts, a little battery. I understand it's a car battery, but this is an old battery. It was beaten up. All my batteries, by the way, are donated. They're used. I had to desulfate them, you know, with a Bedini motor for a couple weeks, and they're, they're far from being brand new, okay? This is part of something I thought I'd share with you. 12.4 um, right now. These are basically all crap batteries, okay, that I basically refurbished with my own time. Some of them took two weeks to come back to life, I'm not kidding. So, I, I, even as they are now, I'm sure they're far from full capacity, and I'm getting this, right? So, could you imagine a brand spanking new battery? Because this is not what I was seeing in the Bedini videos here. I was seeing a quick, and even when he just took one, all the light bulbs off and he had one or two running, you can still see the, the battery going down, you know? None of this kind of thing here. See, 12.49 now. See how that VI curve is acting completely bonkers?
But remember, this is running here in the background, pulsing. So 16 minutes, I think we get the point now, so I'm going to let you go, folks, and please comment anything you want. Uh, I'll try my best. I'm just, you know, an amateur here. Um, my version of kitchen science, um, I don't have a lab or anything like that. If I would, I'd obviously be out there, so I use what I can. So there's limitations with that. 12.5 now, see? Isn't that clonkers? And it'll just run and run like that. Of course, as long as we keep the trigger plugged in. You know. And obviously the battery has wear and tear, so I guess technically we can say this one lasts forever, right? I mean, um, the, com the battery will eventually decompose, right? But, you know, for an on-the-spot emergency, you want light and you have very little input, maybe a little windmill or something. All you need is a trigger, you've got a few clunky batteries, it could make use of that. So we'll see you next time folks, 17 minutes.